His name was Bob. Chapter 15. Trust. Within the last week, Bob was acting... odd. Maybe it was due to the season change? The days were becoming shorter as the fall season approached. It wasn't that he was being angry or moody. Actually, quite the opposite. He was being really nice. Too nice. And kept giving you these weird, concerned looks when he thought you weren't watching. Hell, you even caught him throwing one of your Smash Bros. matches on purpose one night. It was obvious. And he seriously seemed to think you didn't notice. Something was definitely up. You decided to test your theory by accidentally leaving a coffee mug out on the counter the other day. And when you got home from work, the mug had mysteriously moved to the back of the counter and was still intact. How much self-control had that taken? And why was he trying so hard to be nice? Was he feeling insecure again? Ugh, you didn't know how to ask him about it without potentially hurting his feelings. But you were worried. One Thursday, the clinic was completely dead in the water. No surgeries. No afternoon or evening appointments. A rare occurrence, sure, but those days happened. Are you getting bored by the story, Maxie? Hmm? <laughs> yeah. Just settle down and go to sleep. Uh. You decided to take advantage of it and. Uh, settle down. A rare occurrence, sure, but those days happened. You decided to take advantage of it and asked if you could go home early that afternoon. Gary and Dr. Rivera agreed. You figured you'd surprise Bob and take him out for burgers. It had been a while since you all had done that. Ha, he'd be so excited. And then maybe you could ask what was up with him? A cool fall breeze greeted you as you exited your car. Ah, fall. Slightly scented with the smell of pine. And it helped blow away the smell of stale cigarettes and car exhaust somewhat though your front walkway was now littered with pine needles and a few random stray wrappers. You'd have to start sweeping again regularly, lest you track that stuff into your apartment. You unlocked the door and opened it, calling in, Surprise! I'm home early! Silence. Huh. Where had he run off to now? You heard a noise in your room, followed by cursing. Haha, <laughs> had he fallen asleep on your bed again? There you are, you called cheerfully as you entered your room. Wanna go get... burgers? You trailed off, shocked as you took in the sight in front of you. Bob stared up at you, his eye sockets completely devoid of light as he was leaned over, seemingly frozen in the process of shoving something under the bed. No, not something... Your journal! You stared at each other. Had... he been reading your journal? The one thing, the one thing you had asked him not to touch? The silence was broken by your keys hitting the floor. He flinched and straightened up slowly, tiny pinpricks of light returning to his eye sockets, and his mouth stretched into a grimace. He was sweating. Uh, I... uh... He stuttered uselessly, seemingly at a loss for what to say for himself. That. That was why he was acting so weird around you lately. He had been reading that. How much of it had he read? How much... How much did you read? You said, your icy tone foreign even to yourself. He swallowed. Uh, I... Uh, I, I can explain it if... How much did you read? You repeated, your voice raising. Great, your hands were trembling. You clenched them into fists. M most of it, he nearly whispered, looking at the ground. You heard him, though. You closed your eyes, taking deep, steadying breaths. Most of it. Then he knew. All the thoughts and feelings you didn't want anyone to know. Toxic thoughts, bad thoughts, things that should be locked away but now they weren't. He knew, knew what kind of person you were, knew about your mom. It was like a punch to the gut. You trusted him. So help you, you had let him get too close. Stupid, 
This is what happens. This is what always happens. And now he knew. No wonder he looked so worried. He was afraid of you. Could you blame him? I'm sorry, he whispered, looking up at you with teary eyes. I'm sorry. I, I know I shouldn't have, but I wanted to know about you. And, and once I started reading, I I know I shouldn't. The, I should have stopped, but I, 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 I was worried. You don't talk to me. You remained silent. This was it. The part where he'd push you away. Ask you, uh, ask to leave. Ask you to find him somewhere else to stay. That was fine. You didn't need him. Never did. Didn't need anyone. You wouldn't cry. Not this time. He approached you carefully, like you were a wild animal or something, until he stood directly below you, tears welling up in his eye sockets. P please don't don't give me that look. He gripped your scrub pant leg. I'm I'm sorry. I I had to know. I wanted to help. I'm I'm sorry. Please. He looked down as he wiped his eye sockets with the hand not gripping your scrubs. Yeah, he was getting ready to say he wanted a new home. That he had to go. Had to. I love you, he said, almost too quietly to hear. What? You looked down at him as he looked up at you, seemingly searching your expression. No, you heard him wrong. Please, say something. Please talk to me, he begged, tearing up again and tightening his grip on your scrubs. No. Bob was still staring up at you with tiny pupils and teary eyes. No. He didn't mean that. He didn't actually say that. He didn't... It didn't make any sense. This... You couldn't deal with this right now. You couldn't. With shaky hands, you carefully picked him up and walked to the front door. It creaked when you opened it, like it always did. The wind blew more pine needles onto your front driveway. You could hear the sounds of the freeway in the distance. Someone coughed a little ways away. Carefully, you placed Bob on the ground outside. He looked up at you, bewildered. His eye sockets widened, even as his pupils grew more dim. Tears slid down his cheekbones as you closed him outside and locked the door. Then, you sagged down against the front door and tried to catch your breath as you held your head in your hands and squeezed your eyes shut. You just needed a minute to think, process everything. It was too much, too much. A familiar voice yelled out curses outside just before you heard a car door slam. That voice. Your heart dropped in your, into your stomach. You leapt to your feet, flinging the door open, just in time to see a familiar, beat-up old car driving away. And there were drops of blood on the street. And Bob was gone. Chapter 18 Bob Point of View Mini Chapter Okay. Bob's Point of View. He'd fucked up. Fucked up badly this time. He didn't want to hurt you. God, why did he do that? And then he just fucking sniveled and blurted out that he loved you. Fuck. Fuck! You'd really fucked up. He wished he could take it back. Why had he hurt you, and then said something like that to you, as if it would make anything better? It was as if you really... as if you really wanted to hear that from him? And now you wouldn't talk to him, didn't even want him in your home. Part of him thought that was it, you'd wised up and wanted him gone for good. But he'd seen your temper before, just under the surface as you constantly bottled it back. He knew you'd eventually open that door. He knew... He heard a cough behind him. Slowly, he turned around. Your father was standing there, peering down at him. Bob tensed as he felt the light leave his eye sockets and his anger boiled over. Nope, he couldn't let your father anywhere near you when you were this upset. He would just hurt you worse than Bob already had. Bob had to protect you. Your father, that bastard, wasn't allowed anywhere near you. He snarled, his left eye flaring as he launched himself at Ray, tearing into the flesh of his hand. He didn't care how small he was. He wouldn't let your father hurt you, no matter what. 
Ray tore him from his hand, nearly crushing Bob's ribs in the process. Bob struggled to catch his breath as he was slammed into something hard and dark, being carried away amidst Ray's yelling and cursing. Bob fucked up again. He'd have laughed at his own stupidity if it weren't for the growing sense of panic. And even after reading all those things, guess Bob still didn't understand how selfish your father really was. Your father hadn't come to see you at all. He was there for Bob. Sorry, I should have changed this. The plot thickens. Chapter 16. Think. The mailbox is full and cannot... Angrily, you hung up your phone, having reached that message so many times you'd lost count. It had been an hour, an hour since Bob was kidnapped. Yes, kidnapped, though apparently the police didn't agree. They told you biddies were considered property, and that this was a robbery, not a kidnapping. And since the perpetrator was no longer on the premises, you would have to file a report with the non-emergency number, and you had hung up. Each of the several times you had tried to call your father, you reached that infernal message. Your father wasn't answering any of the texts you sent. You were getting nowhere. Nothing. You frantically paced your apartment, varying between hysterical and completely numb. You had to think. Couldn't think. Bob was going to get killed. No, you wouldn't let that happen. Think. You couldn't lose Bob. You wouldn't. You would. No, you wouldn't. Couldn't. Where was your father staying? You didn't know. He was going to sell Bob back to the company. You didn't have time for this. Think. You couldn't think. Why hadn't you chased after him in your car? He would have been long gone by the time you went back for your keys. Why had you put Bob outside in the first place? You weren't thinking. That was no excuse. This was your fault. Your fault. He was going to die and it was your fault. No. 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 This wasn't helping. You had to do something. Do something! You dialed the only other number you could think of. Thank you for calling County Hill Vet Hospital. This is Gary speaking. How may I help you today? He's gone! You croaked out, starting to cry again. Oh god, you were a mess. Oh, I'm so sorry. Can I ask who's... Sweetie? Is that you? Yes! You managed to squeak out between sobs. Are you at home? Yes! Stay there. I'm on my way. G Gary, no. The, the hospital. What if... What if Dr. Rivera... Jeez, you couldn't even speak properly. I'm on my way, he repeated and hung up. Ugh, you had to get yourself together. You were now disrupting your co-workers' lives right after being responsible for getting Bob taken. Maybe ending his life. Your fault. No, stop it. Wallowing in guilt and sadness wasn't helping anyone. There had to be something you could do to fix this. For Bob. Get it together, Tiny. By the time you heard someone knocking at your front door, you had regained some semblance of getting yourself together. Though you almost lost it again when Gary took one look at you and drew you in, hugging you tight. Oh, Pumpkin, you're a wreck, he sighed as he petted the back of your head. Dr. Rivera? You begin to ask. Miguel and Mary are running the hospital just fine. Still no appointments. Oh, honey, Miguel wanted to be here too, but still had some phone calls to make. Come, let's have a sit. Tell me what happened. Bob's gone, you blurted out. It's all my fault. I... Ray, my father, he took him. I don't know where he lives. He didn't even think... I didn't even think to get the license plate number. He's going to sell him back to the company. They're going to kill him. You were starting to become hysterical again. Shh, shh, shh. It's okay. We can figure this out. Gary was hugging you and petting your head again, as if you were a child. Okay, so, he's still alive, yes? And you know who has him. That's good. Very good. We'll find him for sure. He led you over to the couch and sat you down, taking a seat beside you. All right, so, first things first. Did you call the police? Yes. You took a breath. 
Yes. They told me it wasn't an emergency, that I'll have to file a report. But that'll take too long, and by the time... Okay, so that's out. No biggie. Do you know anyone who might know where your father lives? You thought about it, about the last time he visited. Of course. He said Brian lived just around the corner from you. Gah, why hadn't you thought of that before? You leapt to your feet. Brian, he knows my father. He lives right around the corner. There you go. See, we'll find Bob. He stood up. Do you know what apartment Brian is in? Sorry, I messed that up. Do you know what a... Do you know which apartment this Brian is in? Ugh, no. My father just said he lives around the corner. Shit, how are you going to find him? Alright, that's okay. We'll just go knock on doors until we find him. Your apartment complex isn't that big. Even if we don't find his right away, someone's bound to know him. Okay. Okay, this could work. Sure, your apartment community wasn't the best. But it was daylight, and you had to find him. You both set off in opposite directions, agreeing to text each other if you found something. Twenty minutes passed. My dog wants to get off my lap. Hold on. <laughs> Hooked on the chair. Okay. 20 minutes passed, then 30. The people who did answer their doors didn't know O'Brien. What if your father had lied about him living here? Why would he lie about something so trivial, though? No, Brian was there. He had to be. A girl answered her door, opening it part way. You could see she kept the chain on it. She eyed you suspiciously, lifting an eyebrow as she drank her tea. Apparently she liked her tea strong, as there were several tea flags waving from their strings against the mug. I'm sorry to bother you, you said, repeating the mantra you had used for the other tenants who actually answered their doors. Does Brian live here? Or do you know a Brian who lives around here? I really need to find him. The girl slowly closed the door, saying nothing. Damn it, another bust. You started to move on to the next apartment when you heard the small chain rattle against the door and it was opened all the way. Oh. The girl stepped out onto the porch as you stepped back. She pointed at the apartment two doors away from where you were standing. There. Thank you so much, you said breathlessly, waving as you dashed towards the apartment. The girl nodded and retreated back into her apartment. You probably slammed your fists a little too furiously against Brian's apartment door. Please be home. Please be home. You heard a latch click. Oh, thank God. You recognized the scruffy face that appeared in the doorway as one of your father's friends who used to visit him when you were a child. He squinted at you before recognition took over his features. Hey, it's Ray's... No, that's Ray's voice. Hey, it's Ray's kid. That's also Bob's voice. What voice does this guy have? Hey, it's Ray's kid. He seemed surprised. Wow, it's been too long. Didn't know you remembered me or I would have had said hi sooner. How have you... He waved a hand, cutting... You waved a hand, cutting him off. I'm sorry, but I'm running out of time and I really need to know where my father lives. Please tell me he told you where he's staying now. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Here, let me write down the address for you. He reached over to the table beside the door, the door <laughs> beside the door, scribbling down an address on an old receipt. Is Ray in some kind of trouble again? You know, I told him we ain't so young no more, and you snatched the receipt from the address from him. No, you snatched the receipt with the address from him. I'm sorry, I really don't have time. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm glad we're leaving that character because that voice hurt my throat. <laughs> You were making a dash back to your car as Brian was left kind of floundering and staring after you. Sure, sure, you heard him say. You quickly plugged the address into your phone as you ran back to your car. This wasn't very far from where you lived. The navigator said 20 minutes. 
almost three hours since Bob had been taken. The sun was starting to set, and with it, the temperature was dropping. If you were lucky, your father decided to wait until the next day to try to sell Bob back to the company. Worst came to worst, you'd find out where your father brought Bob and try to buy him back. Though you didn't have $10,000. You had saved up some for school, but not nearly that much. You could borrow money. As much as you didn't want to, but this was an emergency. Maybe Gary... Crap! You forgot to call him! As you drove, you hit the button to dial his number. Where are you? He answered on the first ring. I'm sorry, I, I found Brian. I'm on my way to... You glanced at the paper, giving him the address. It's okay, sweetie. I'll meet you there. Drive safely, please. You hung up the phone, bringing the navigator back up, hoping you weren't too late. Well, I'm afraid that's where we have to end it here. Uh, psych, I'm not that cruel. <laughs> Chapter 16 and a half. Hold up, I gotta change the... I gotta change this. The official. There we go. Now it looks official. Chapter 16 and a half. Bob's point of view mini chapter. Things and what they seem. Not a very happy mini-chapter, so... Bob's point of view. He scrambled at the lid of his airtight container uselessly. He was trapped. Couldn't breathe. Couldn't get out. He must have started panicking, because he didn't remember the time from when he was shut in there to the time the lid opened again. But when it did... He recognized the logo and uniform of the person reaching for him with gloved hands. Gloves that can't be bitten through. Heh, <laughs> he didn't even try. He knew he was going to be dead. Dust. Strange he was actually calm about the whole thing as the Eudogen employee lifted him from his container. All he could think about was you. Would you miss him? Would you be better off now that you didn't have to care f that you didn't have him to care for? Would you be better off now that you didn't have him to care for anymore? Sorry. He wanted you to be happy. He wanted you to actually be able to attend school, move into a better neighborhood, find more people you were willing to trust, maybe people you were willing to love, even. You were the first person who showed any care toward him whatsoever, the first one to even treat him like he was alive, and then treat him like an equal even when he acted like an ass and pissed you off. Sure, you hid your <laughs> insults and sarc- <laughs> Shut up, Maxie! This is a dramatic part! No! Where was I? Sure, you hid behind insults and sarcasm, but it was obvious you cared. He didn't... still didn't understand why. Heh, <laughs> was it any real surprise he loved you? But it didn't matter. You had nothing to gain from it. Nothing. He couldn't do anything for you now. Never really could. Bob closed his eyes as a gloved hand held up a device over his skull. In his last moments of consciousness... He knew you would come to realize you were better off without him. Yeah. You'd be okay. Chapter 17. Love. Your father wasn't joking when he said your place was nice compared to where he lived. Turns out, he lived in an old, run-down motel. Half of the main front sign looked like it had been destroyed, and chunks of the plastic were missing. There was graffiti covering most of the cracked brick walls. Beer cans, busted lawn furniture, and various trash littered the walkways. The roof was missing whole patches of shingles. Some of the windows were broken. You were surprised the place wasn't already condemned. You quickly parked, and an old man sitting on the curb watched you curiously, his bleary red eyes swimming in his sockets. He smiled at you, and he was missing some teeth. 
You hurried past him, knocking on the door that was supposed to belong to your father. But there was no answer. That was definitely his car parked out front, though. You knocked harder, and the door squeaked open. It was dark inside the motel room. You about gagged as the smell of mildew and garbage assaulted your nostrils. You flipped the light switch on the wall, and the light flickered, before it turned on with an audible hum. The place was an utter disaster. The floor was covered in pizza boxes and various empty alcohol containers, and there was definitely some kind of insects moving in there. The wallpaper was peeling in places, there were cracks along the walls and the ceiling, and it looked like actual mold or mildew was growing in some of the corners. The furniture consisted of an unmade bed, a dusty old red sofa, and a dresser covered in trash and papers, though at the corner sat a lidded Tupperware container, looking out of place. Bob might be in there. Deciding you didn't care about breaking and entering, or the bugs, you carefully picked your way over the garbage to approach the container. Just as you made a grab for it, you heard footsteps approaching the front, open front doorway. Whoa, hey! Your father paused, holding his hands up as you grabbed the container and whipped around to glare at him. In one of his hands was a brown paper bag, and the other hand had a large makeshift bandage over the area between his thumb and pointer. He was wearing the shirt of one of the local pizza joints. He blinked and relaxed, dropping his hands. Oh, well, if it isn't my child, come to visit your old- Don't even start that shit, you hissed at him, turning your attention back to the container and frantically pulling at the lid, hoping against hope Bob was in there. Finally, with a pop, the lid came off. You dropped the container, horrified and gagging. It was full of old, moldy... You didn't even know what it used to be. Where is he? You asked as you frantically scanned the room, looking for any sort of container that might be bob-sized. Where's who? He asked unconvincingly, feigning innocence, scratching at his chest with one hand while holding the paper bag in the other. That bag. Hey! Ray yelped as you snatched the bag away from him, reaching in to find yet another Tupperware container. Relief flooded you as you tore off the lid and you saw Bob laying in the bottom, but your relief turned back to cold dread as you realized Bob wasn't moving. Bob? Hey! You gently scooped him out, dropping the container to the floor. He was completely limp and ice cold, like literally ice cold. Ignoring the growing numbing pain in your hand, you tried petting his skull and nudging his shoulder. You turned him around, lifting his shirt and checking him all over for injuries. There weren't any. He still wasn't moving. Why was he so cold? Bob? Oh, was that your edgy bitty? Gosh, I didn't even realize. I found it outside and... What did you do to him? You practically yelled at your father, fighting back tears as you held Bob to your chest. He was too cold. Was he dead? No, 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 no. He couldn't be. He couldn't. Hey, now, I didn't do nothing. Company wouldn't pay no money for it anyhow. The guy who scanned his chip thing seemed real confused and went to get a manager. Said he needed to take it to the back and tried to take it from me, but I grabbed it and left before he could and... Shut up! You screamed at him. You tried to have him killed! For money! You knew I cared about him, but you just took him away! All for money, you selfish prick! Murderer! He backed up, wide-eyed, and put up his hands. Hey, now! Calm down, child! You don't mean it! Hey! Why don't you take a few steps back now, all right? I... I don't want to hurt you. Oh, it's too late for that. Much too late for that. You barked out a humorless laugh, still approaching him, one hand holding Bob to you and the other hand clenching into a fist. You didn't know if you would have actually hit your father. You never got to find out, because one more step back had your father bumping into Gary's chest. Your father stared up at the stern-looking older man, frowning down at him. You're the father, I presume? Gary said. I'd say it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, but we'd both know that would be a lie. Ray started to come up with some excuse again as Gary said something back, 
But you stopped listening. Your attention turned back to Bob. He was freezing. Your hand was growing numb, and you could feel the cold seeping through your scrub top. Bob... He couldn't be dead, right? When they died, they'd turn to dust. He wasn't dust. Why wasn't he breathing? But as you watched, you could see him faintly breathing. He was definitely breathing. He was alive. Oh, thank the stars he was alive. But he could still die. You had to get him to wake up. Bob? You tried again, gently rubbing the side of his face with your finger as you cradled him. Please, please wake up. Please. Please. I'm sorry. Please be okay. You heard your father and Gary arguing about something in the background, but none of that mattered. Bob, he had to wake up. He had to. Wait, was it your hopeful imagination, or was Bob's breathing getting a little stronger? No, he definitely took a deeper breath there. And then his face scrunched as he slowly opened his eyes, the little lights in them hazy and dull, but there, focusing on you. Hey, you smiled, even as your voice cracked. Are, are, are you okay? No, of course not, stupid question. You grimaced as he continued to watch you, his face expressionless. He was staring at you, but still wasn't moving, looking almost confused. Was he really conscious? Was he actually okay? Are you here? Can you hear me? You asked, searching his face for some kind of understanding. He continued to watch you, blinking as the lights in his eyes became less hazy and more focused into two sharp points of light. He blinked one final time before his eye sockets widened, tears forming along the edges. He reached out a hand toward you. You held his little hand with your finger and thumb. It's okay, I've got you. It's okay now. I'm so sorry, but you're okay now. We're going home. It's going to be okay. I'm sorry. You were babbling. He started trembling all over and hiccuped as tears streamed down the sides of his face. You held him to your chest as he clutched at your scrub top and cry uh, quietly cried into you. You whispered how sorry you were over and over again, not knowing what else to say as you held him and stroked the back of his skull, feeling awful but at the same time so relieved. He was going to be okay. You weren't too late. He was okay. You soon felt a strong arm gently hug you, and you looked up into Gary's face, feeling your own tears falling. He wiped your face with a handkerchief and pressed it into your free hand as he steered you back toward the front door. As you passed your father, you paused, meeting his eyes. It, it wasn't just for the money, you know, he said. I was gonna use the money to get my life together, try and be a better dad. I miss you, you're my only family, you know, I, I love you. I never want to see you again! You choked at him, glaring through the tears. Never! He opened his mouth like he would say something else, and then closed it, squinting at the ground and scratching at his shoulder. You and Gary left his motel room and the door shut behind you. I'm gonna drive you back to your apartment with your car. Miguel and I will come back later for my car. Your keys, if you please. Gary said, reaching out a hand. You didn't argue. Bob was still clutched to your chest, seemingly oblivious to everything around him. At least he was starting to feel a little less cold. Ugh. Hold on. I need puppy therapy. Maxie! Maxie, I need you! Oh, sorry, that was probably that. Okay. I couldn't get Maxie, so I have Sandy instead. He doesn't like being held <laughs> as nearly as much. Sandy, it's a hard part of the story, huh? Huh? He has a sock on his foot because he hurt his... <laughs> he has a little cut on his foot. I don't know how you managed to do that. If you want more Bob, uh, let me know. 
right in the in the comments. I I love getting comments from you guys. So, uh, it's such a good story. Thank you.